Hey guys, welcome to Game Bad today, bringing another video for our weapon conversion series. And today we're going to cover a weapon that I haven't really made, gotten to quite yet, and I've been saving this one off for a while here. And this is the Springfield Armory M1A with the ProMag Archangel stock or chassis on this weapon. So what we'll do, I'll show you how to build this weapon. We'll build it up from scratch. I'll show you some of the different attachments, jump in game and see how it handles in multiplayer as well as in game against bots, as well as the recoil pattern for this weapon. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So back out, this is the final design for the Springfield Armory M1A using the ProMag Archangel stock or chassis on this particular weapon. So we'll go ahead and back out and we'll build this thing from scratch. So first off, if I go to my armory for this weapon, there's a bunch of different blueprints here that I have. And the one that I'm utilizing to use this blueprint, which you don't need to use, but it just helps me save out on an attachment, is going to be the messenger blueprint here so this is a season one blueprint i believe it was unlocked in the battle pass for the for this game again season one battle pass and you can see there the attachments on this come at base with the particular stock that we want to use or the chassis for this weapon so first off we'll go ahead and back out and i'll show you the differences in how to build this so if i go to my weapon here we have the m1a i'll go ahead and strip this down to scratch and this at base is what the weapon looks like so if i were to use just a regular M14 at the base weapon variant for this weapon. You'll see the stock that we would need to, for this key attachment to turn it into the Archangel stock from ProMag would be the FTAC lightweight stock. So this is going to turn this weapon cosmetically into the variant that we want here using the ProMag Archangel stock or the chassis system on this particular weapon. So you can see that there, how it looks. But again, the blueprint that we're using does this at base, so I can save out on the attachments. But I'll build my blueprint version first, and then I'll show you how to build it from the base M14 if you don't have this particular blueprint. Now, there are a couple different blueprints that come at base with this stock or chassis system on this weapon. So just keep that in mind when you're building this. So first off, we're going to want, for the suppressor, I'm going to just utilize a monolithic suppressor. And this particular blueprint actually comes with this version of the monolithic suppressor here. So you can see how it does retain the blueprint camos on this weapon so this is going to assist us with a sound suppression damage at range the cons here being the ads speed and the aim walking steadiness so we'll go ahead and select that now the barrel we're going to want for this it really doesn't matter the barrel length for these weapons the m1a's are going to be between 16 and 22 inch but to stay consistent we're going to go with the 22 inch barrel this is going to assist us with the damage range bullet velocity and the recoil control the cons here being the ads speed and the movement speed. But also keep in mind with the FTAC Precision 20 inch barrel, you're getting very similar pros and cons. You're also getting that recoil control. You're just getting a little bit less mobility on this weapon. So, or a little bit more mobility versus the 22 inch. So we'll go ahead and select the 22 again, just to stay consistent with the particular build that we're going for here. We'll go ahead and skip out on the laser. And now for the optic, we're gonna want, again, personal preference, you can always go with the sniper scope, but I'm gonna go with a variable zoom scope. This is just gonna allow me to toggle from a 3.5 to an eight times magnification as well as the con here being the ADS speed, just because we're adding that extra weight with the optic to the weapon. So we'll go ahead and select that. Now again, we don't need to utilize the FTAC lightweight stock on this for the cosmetic reasons because the weapon comes like that at base, which is good. So we can skip out on that attachment. However, if you don't have a blueprint like this, you're gonna need to utilize that FTAC lightweight stock attachment. But now we'll skip out on that because we have that stock at base. The ammunition, we're going to go with a 20 round mag of the 762 by 51 NATO. So it's a very heavy round. Definitely going to do a lot of damage here in multiplayer as well as Warzone. The pros, again, you're going from a base of 10 rounds to the 20 round magazine of the 762 by 51 NATO. Cons being the ADS speed and the movement speed. So we'll go ahead and select that. Now for the underbarrel for this one, just because of how I use it in particular, I'm going to go ahead and use the Merc foregrip. This is a heavy caliber rifle being the 762 by 51 millimeter. So you're really going to want to control that recoil best you can, especially if you're tap firing pretty quickly since it is a semi-automatic weapon. So the pros here being the recoil control and the hip fire accuracy. Again, this is really going to assist us with the recoil control which we need for this weapon. Cons being the aim walking movement speed and the ADS speed. So go ahead and select that. And there is our Springfield Armory M1A with the Pro Mag Archangel or the Archangel stock on this weapon. And again, you can see they're very aesthetically pleasing on this particular blueprint so again if you don't have a blueprint like that and you needed to build this from scratch so you could skip out on something like a muzzle or something but again you're going to need to utilize this ftac lightweight stock whichever variant you have for a blueprint obviously you can use that at base but we'll go ahead and select that since that is the key attachment to make it into the pro make archangel stock and then we're just going to go ahead and go ahead and attach the same type of optics and other attachments on here we'll go ahead with our 
Merc Foregrip, and then we'll do our 20 round magazine. Now you have the same thing. We just subtracted the suppressor on this weapon. So still very viable gun. And again, you're going to get actually get the added bonus of what that FTAC lightweight stock comes with, which is additional aim walking movement speed. The only con here being the aim is stability. But if you have a blueprint that does this for you with the cosmetic changes for the blueprint, I would recommend using it just so you can save out an attachment and utilize something like either a laser or a suppressor, or maybe even a compensator to help out with the recoil. So let's go ahead and we'll back out to our particular blueprint that we're utilizing here. Again, the blueprint I'm using here, which I showed is going to be the messenger blueprint for the EBR 14. And again, we've converted this into the Springfield Armory M1A with the ProMeg Archangel stock. And again, you can look at just what the camouflage look like on this. Obviously, this is going to be different based on what blueprint you're using or if you're just using the base stock attachment and you don't have a blueprint for this. But you can see how that looks. And again, that is our Springfield Armory M1A. So this is a civilian variant of the M14 EBR. And this is utilizing the ProMeg Archangel stock. Arch Angel stock on this weapon. That's a hardware design. But again, very nice looking weapon. And actually, we jumped into some of the gameplay here. This is actually one of my, I think, favorite weapons, specifically in multiplayer. I picked this up, and as I was leveling it up, oddly enough, I, I mainly play realism when I do play multiplayer. And I was leveling it up pretty nicely. Still had not too many attachments for it. And I ended up getting into a realism shipment match for, I believe, just Team Deathmatch on shipment. And I ended up going 72 and 30, I believe, which was probably my best game of multiplayer ever in Call of Duty history, especially with this particular weapon being a DMR. We were using it like a DMR, but also, oddly enough, this weapon is very, very good at hip firing. I'm able to hip fire within a decent amount of range, and you tap fire, you can get a pretty high rate of fire since it is semi-automatic, and I'm able to actually engage people fairly well at those closer ranges by hip firing this weapon and not adsing which is pretty strange to think about but again i was using this kind of along the lines how i would use it in targov and it, for some reason it actually works in this game again you don't want to be hip firing too far out but you'll see here in game i hip fire quite a bit you're going to utilize a lot of ammo because you're hip firing and not adsing but you're going to save yourself that time and again if you're in a pinch you can actually definitely get the kills usually going to be around a two hit kill and then a one to the head i believe with these attachments that we have here in multiplayer but again i play realism so it's always going to be a one shot to the head regardless but again the hip fire accuracy on this is is oddly oddly good which is pretty strange but very nice looking weapon and again this is definitely for multiplayer it excels very very well i'm able to utilize this almost on any map and again you can use it in that designated marksman rifle roll or you can and you use it as kind of a run and gun weapon as well if you can bump up the ADS speed on this but again you can hit fire in a pinch which is always really good and you'll see some of the gameplay I'm going to show just a little mix of one clip from multiplayer that I got just finishing out a game on Piccadilly as well as here against boss we'll see how it handles but again very nice weapon let me know what you guys think of this again this is the EBR 14 cosmetically changed into the Springfield Armory M1A for our weapon conversion series here so this weapon in real life as I said is the civilian version of Springfield Armory's M14 now the major differences between this weapon there's a couple of very minor ones, but the main one here, obviously, the M14 was or did have the ability to go fully automatic with a fire rate between 700 and 750 rounds per minute. The M1A, being that it was produced for civilian use, does not have the ability to go fully automatic. It is a strictly semi-automatic rifle. But other than that, the differences between the two rifles are very, very minor. So this is a civilian variant of the M14 EBR called the M1A. Now... This is produced or designed in 1974 by Springfield Armory. Unit cost is around $2,000. And again, since this is a civilian variant, variant of the rifle being the M1A, you can purchase this yourself based on what state you're in and what specs you put on the rifle. It was produced between 1974 and present, so still a very popular rifle, especially in the Special Forces community as well as civilian market, obviously. The variants of this are pretty wide. We have a standard, loaded, national match, super match, M21, M25, SOCOM 16, which is something we'll cover on this channel in the future for a conversion. A squad scout, SOCOM 2, and tank are the different variants utilized for this weapon. The mass on this is going to be 7.8 through 11.6 pounds. And the overall length, based on the different barrel lengths and stock options here, obviously we have an Archangel chassis on this weapon or a stock, so the length overall for this weapon can be anywhere between 37.25 inches and 44.3 inches and again utilizing this pro mag 
arc angle stock that we have here, the overall length is going to be 33.625 inches on the actual stock itself for the chassis system there. Now the cartridge for this, as I said, is going to be 762 by 51 NATO. However, it also is able to fire the 308 Winchester and a 6.5 millimeter round as well. The barrel length, as I said, varies anywhere between 16 inches and 22 inches in length or 406 millimeters through 559 millimeters and the action again is a gas operated rotating bolt rate of fire again being semi-automatic you can fire it as high as fast as you can pull the trigger and you know, i'm not sure what the cap is definitely not as fast as the fal but again you can tap by this pretty quick as you'll see me do in some of the gameplay especially in those cqb situations where i need to utilize this for hip fire i find this is actually dependent on how close the enemy is more efficient than actually swapping out to a pistol or another weapon if i really need to kill somebody quick in a close quarter situation i will just mag dump 20 rounds at close quarters and end up taking out one or two guys if not more depending on the ranges i'm engaging at feed system in real life is going to be a 5 10 or a 20 round box mag the sights on this again just they, it does have strict iron sights that we've seen before same here in game very similar again but we have the optic on this weapon which works out really well. So let me know what you guys think of this. Again, this is the weapon conversion series for the turning the EBR-14 or the Springfield Armory M14 into the civilian version, the Springfield Armory M1A. And again, we're utilizing that Pro Mag Archangel stock here, which is actually a real life stock for this weapon, which looks really nice. There's some minor cosmetic changes to this as you would have seen with the picture that I already posted. But again, very spot on. We have the Picatinny rails on this on the left, right, top and bottom of the weapon as well as we have the cheek rest there so it's essentially very very similar very minor cosmetic changes to the actual stock here for the pro Meg archangel stock and this actually comes in real life in black and desert tan which we're utilizing the desert tan variant here with this blueprint and it looks you can see in the gameplay here a little bit beat up and battle worn which is also really cool to see so let me know what you guys think down below again this is springfield armory m1a utilizing the pro Meg archangel stock and i'm gonna leave you guys with the gameplay this is buffering your gaming until next time buffering your gaming out Now that was a fight, solid work.